Good morning. We are here in Russellville, Alabama uh, with the Pavlov Across America 2011 crew. As you can see, there's quite a few of us. We have lots of people putting out lots of energy on their bikes to, uh, to try and mimic the struggle and the constant uh, force of pediatric cancer treatment that's needed not only by the the child who's undergoing treatment but by the entire family and it's a real joy to sit at the back of the group this week with this many riders and just see these two giant columns of riders going up the highway uh, today we are crossing another state line does anybody know where we're going today someone has to Columbus, 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 Mississippi. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to have you because that means we're crossing another state line and there's going to be another big race. Um, today's dedication uh, to a child who's going through cancer treatment is is uh, very meaningful to me. Um, by way of, uh, of explanation, I have to tell you that we dedicate our rides to children that uh, we have never met, some of whom just through the course of life uh, we may meet, and some of whom we, we will never meet uh, because we find them through the internet or through uh, mom or dad sending us an email and asking to do a dedication. There are some children who, who um, are friends of ours from the hallways of children's hospitals, and uh, the little boy that we're dedicating our ride to today, Ryland Stout, um, fits in somewhere in the middle there. His uncle, um, Al Barr, is the lead singer in Dropkick Murphys. I manage the band, and uh, it was about a month and a half ago, Al called me on a Monday morning on September 12th. Uh, we had just played two sold-out nights at Fenway Park in Boston uh, the prior Thursday and Friday. We were, we were riding very high in the Dropkick Murphys camp. Everybody was elated. The shows went very well, and Al called me, and he was distraught. And he, he, he informed me that his little nephew, who's two years old, Rylan, had just been diagnosed with an inoperable, incurable brain tumor. Um, this is an example of uh, a friend of mine who is only now learning about the Pablo Foundation, who never met Pablo, who was meeting me after uh, Joanne and Grady and I went through uh, our cancer journey with Pablo. Um, for whom the Pablo Foundation was um, a thing, an idea, an organization that he backed with all of his heart, but had no idea that he would uh, become part of it. Um, Al immediately gave me the phone number uh, for Ryland's father, Matt. Um, I, I emailed with Ryland's uh, parents, Matt and Jessica, and um, I was able to speak to them as a father who had been given uh, the same news about his own son that um, the cancer inside uh, the body of, of my child was in fact incurable, that there were no known survivors. And Matt's email to us, uh, which provided detail for this uh, video, uh, said just that, that there are no survivors of the type of cancer that Rylan has. This is not an easy thing for me to say. Um, it's not an easy thing for me to accept in any way. But the fact is, is that this is what we're looking at in the pediatric cancer world. A little two-year-old boy who lives in Woodstock, Vermont, probably one of the cleanest uh, areas of the entire world. There's no smog there. There's no factories there. There's none of the things that we associate with environmental <coughs> effects of cancer in Woodstock, Vermont. It's, it's God's country as far as I can tell. And um, Ryland, like all little boys, loves playing with tractors. He loves riding his bike with his dad. And uh, even like me, he loves chewing with his mouth full of food. And, uh, and that's a fact from, from his dad, Matt. So we can laugh at that. It's, uh, you know, I know some of these guys because we've been eating three meals together every day. They like to talk with food coming out of their mouths, too. <laughs> and sometimes it happens when we're on our bikes, too. Um, Rylan likes playing with his little sister, I'm sorry, with his big sister, Jane. And um, most of all, most of all, he likes reading. He likes being a little boy, uh, which is something I relate to as, as the father of a little boy myself. Um, when, when I spoke to uh, Rylan's father, Matt, they were at uh, the hospital up at Dartmouth uh, in, in Maine. 
and uh, it's a great hospital there. They went down to Dana-Farber Children's Hospital in Boston uh, to, to get a second opinion, which is something that any parent, we have two cancer parents here right now, uh, John and, and Adam, second opinions, we might all agree. Absolutely. Third, fourth, fourth opinions, yeah. fifth opinions. It's an incredibly in important thing. Uh, of course it is. Um, I like to make very obvious points, but you know, we, we sometimes will get a third opinion on how well our cell phone works uh, or how well our, the wheels on our bike work. We're talking about a human life here. We're talking about uh, one day your little boy's playing and the next day he's laying in a gurney in, in a hospital and you're being told that he has a brain tumor in the stem of his brain that's completely untouchable. So Ryland is, is uh, getting the treatment that he can get right now. Um, and uh, he is enjoying life right now. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that they even went to the emergency room on that first day is that the left side of his body suddenly uh, stopped working to its full uh, uh, function. And so with the help of his, of his treatment right now, he's getting some of that function back. So as we ride our bikes today, and as we use all of our bodies to balance on our bikes and to ride the next uh, 80 or 90 miles uh, to the next town, we're going to hold Ryland uh, and the whole Stout family in our hearts, um, and we're gonna we're gonna really appreciate the fact that today our bodies work so that we can go out there and ride for the kids and the families who are going through pediatric cancer. This is this is why we're out here. Um, we mess around on the bikes, we crack lots of jokes. Frankly, we struggle a lot on the climbs. But why we're here is for kids like Ryland and, and for siblings like Jane and for parents um, like Matt and Jessica. Um, you guys are, are sort of half a country away from us in Vermont and our hearts are with you. You've got a pretty big gang here that's got your back and uh, we're gonna do our best to keep flying the flag of pediatric cancer so that someday a child can be diagnosed with this, with this uh, glioma and be given maybe a pill or maybe uh, somebody could scan an iPhone over his head mm -hmm. and he can go on and plan his tractor. We're not there yet, but we all know that polio killed tens of millions of people within our parents' and grandparents' lifetime. I want to point out that my son Pablo's grandfather, my wife's father, and his sister are both polio survivors. So we can stand here and think this might be far off. What's this guy talking about? He's out of his mind, but it's actually not that far off. If we all stand up and say, we're not going to take this, we need to directly fund research. We need to hold researchers accountable. And we need to fund them when and only when they reach the goals that they say they're going to reach. That's important stuff. We have to treat cancer like business because that's how things progress, okay? That's the bottom line for me. We're going to get on our bikes now. And uh, Ryland, we're saying hi to you from uh, Alabama. And uh, keep rocking today, dude, okay?